Hey everybody, hi it's Tony Monaco. Thanks for taking the time to preview this video and it's an introduction to a new series that we're putting together now called Split Keys. And this is for all you keyboard players out there that want to make yourself a little bit more marketable. Well this is a great skill to learn and it's one that I've used my whole life. Many of you may know me as the jazz organist because I love playing Hammond organ. But I've also played keys my whole life. I played a lot of gigs where I went with the keyboard similar to this and split it up so I could play left hand bass lines, can play piano or comp sounds, orchestral sounds with my right hand and do a very similar thing as I do with the organ but just with keyboard. So like for instance if I was playing a gig and I wanted to make it sound like I had an upright bass and a piano and what I would do is just split my keyboard up with left, right, you know, left, upright bass here with my left hand and my piano on the right hand side. See, it's very cool. Sounds like a bass player, piano player. So these kind of songs can earn, can easily be transferred or learned how to play in this style with this new series that I have because I'm going to go through the concepts of how to put this together. So for this introduction video, I'm just trying to give you some basic style sounds and show you what can possibly be done. And in this series, the first one is basically I'm going to show you how to put together all these different sounds and concepts per style so that you could start building a bank of split sounds, one for this, one for that, different sounds like that if you want to get into funk, some slap, a little bit of clavinet, a little bit of a... Tynes Rhodes piano sound with maybe a little fretless bass, some ideas how to use it. That's in volume one. In volume two, it's going to be basically the concepts to how to build these bass lines. I'm going to teach you how to be a bass player with your left hand. It's possible. I, it's my favorite thing to do. I love playing bass. Volume three, we're going to take you and show you how to play all these things now with one hand because if you've been a piano player, voicing things with two hands. Now we have taken away the left hand to play bass. I'm going to give you concepts on how to build your right hand chops together so you can comp and solo lead and not really miss your left hand and actually recreate some new stuff. So it's a very cool adventure to be able to split your mind in being a bass player and a piano player at the same time. So this is really cool. And then what I like to do is find a keyboard that's large enough so that it gives me enough range to do them both successful successfully so this is a 76 note keyboard it's just barely enough if i had 88 that would be great too but this works real well because it's portable it gives me everything i need and it's lower budget because when you're looking at smaller keyboards of course they're less expensive so budget portability these things are all important so the reason why I developed this skill was when I was raising my children and working a day gig and not really playing music full time. I went out on the weekends and could go play a club real simply by myself, sing, play split keys with bass and piano, have a little rhythm machine or a live drummer if I could hire for a duo. And I could work every weekend, Friday and Saturday night, create a little niche for myself 
you know, some little ritzy club today, like a nice little steakhouse. This is kind of the perfect setup for those kind of things where they don't have to invest in a lot to make this happen because you're already coming in with the base and the comp and the whole thing put together so you can make yourself marketable and get a lot of work and make a nice little side change too with your little tip jar. Uh, you know, it was not unusual for me on a Friday or Saturday night to walk out with $100 or better, sometimes just in tips. So this kind of style is very useful. And then, and once again, look at the economy of scale. If you can play your own bass and your own comp and keys, then you basically save that money that you can either make yourself or go into a smaller situation and do pretty well. So it works really well. So I like to think of this in terms of a skill that's, you know, so necessary today if you want to work a lot more and work alone. So this works really well from just the monotonous same old piano, just two hand styles. You can start using some creative, you know, sounds to really make yourself you know, sound good and have some fun with the music itself. So I like to show you on this video here just basically some small things of what to do, what to look for to get started. And you can check with these uh, volumes. Volume four, by the way, basically is just going to be, we'll put it together. We'll get a little, some, some rhythm somehow with maybe uh, uh, some loops. And we'll start putting together different, those sound groups and loops and styles. And we'll put them together so you can start looking forward into practicing how to put this stuff together. So it's going to be a great series. It's called Split Keys, Volume 1 through 4. And of course, in the future, there'll be more volumes. So uh, anyhow, here's how we do it. What I like to do is I like to find a split point that naturally works. So for instance, if I'm playing an acoustic piano sound, I got to think about even though I'm going to lose what? I'm going to lose maybe going down real low. That's my lowest note. I gain the fact that I've got a bass that's going to go all the way down. That's why I like this particular keyboard because it goes all the way down to low E, which is the natural low bass open string. My acoustic bass is going to go up one octave, two octaves all the way up to B flat. I know it's high. Maybe some of you might not want to use this extra space for bass because you say you might not use it or not. That's, the, that's up to you. Uh, I like to use the full range of a bass. If a real bass player were playing, sometimes he might stretch it up in there. So I like to try to sound as authentic in the style and the sound of the instrument as possible. Now I know that I kind of lose the fact that I can't go down so far. However, I gained the, this range for comp, which is really good. And then I can solo up here. Okay, so if there's another trick I would need to know, I can always go into the first program and I could change the octave just by finding where the MIDI transpose is. Here it is. And now I can go an octave higher. So if I want a higher piano, I got it. But I just can't get so low. So it depends on what my application is. So usually I like to keep the lower notes reserved when I'm playing and then maybe set another patch for high piano. That way in my normal circumstances, this feels more natural to me in terms of playing left hand bass and comping. So I like to think of my basses. See, I get high with that bass too. So 
my voicings that I'm selecting are also working. Now my sustain pedal only works for the piano. So my bass is always free to work. So that's how I do it when I do my split point. I turn my sustain off on the bass because I could just make the duration of the, of the bass note be its natural sustain. down here and solo up here. So the style is kind of like that where I'm comping, leading, soloing with my right hand just as if I was playing the organ, right? where the left hand is free to just run those bass lines. So then it becomes like some sound selections and styles. Notice here I've got like a fretless bass. So that's almost kind of like an organ bass. It's nice and you can play it legato and it kind of fills up a big gap. So that kind of always sounds nice with a little tine. Right? So Naturally, if I want to get into some music that's more like Once again, my sustain pedal So I can play pads It's a very pretty style the sustain is only working for the time piano. So you can use contrast of sustain up and down to get different sounds with your single handing comp, leaving your left hand free to say these lines. And notice that the voicings in volume three when I show you the comp voicings that we're omitting the root a lot of time because we're covering it so I'll show you the secrets on how to do this and how to make your voicings methods as well so that way you can kind of learn how to get this timing thing creative imagine if you just had a drummer here right now just playing a nice Latin thing you can leave yourself a lot of space so once you get away from the feeling of like you've got to fill up those you know threes and sevens and the comp chords with your left hand once you can get away from that and start to learn to put that in your right hand and incorporating it with your thumb and your second finger and putting your colors on the outside you get run into this whole new world of rhythms and freedoms and moving colors around just by moving from let's say a root in a dominant seven to the tritone it's as simple as just moving that bass line 
That's really cool, right? So that was a fretless style. Let's say I wanted to get into something a little bit more funky with like a uh, punchy slap bass, you know? So what we might want to do in this situation is change the keyboard uh, pressure point so that it won't slap so easy because I don't, I don't want to overdo the, <coughs> the slap. I just want it there to create. And that's something you can't do, see, with, a, with an organ. You can do it with a keyboard because with touch sensitivity, you can set these velocity points so that different things can happen at different times. That starts to make it real exciting, right? So if I want to play a little vamp. style I'll show you how to do that and it's a matter of learning how to practice and you know learning the you know control of your hands and and the pressure when to slap when not to slap notice I use my thumb it's almost like the bass player does so it works effectively for me notice the slaps are usually an octave higher anyhow so I've kind of like got the roots going on down here and I've got the slaps going on up here. So there's a little technique to that. We'll kind of learn on how to practice on that. But meantime, check out how cool that style sounds. It's really nice to be able to play that. So I like to go out and be able to play a gig that I can swing with my piano and my, my uh, upright. Modern day swing. concepts to build these really cool bass lines so you can really start sounding like an authentic bass player and not just a keyboard player playing roots and fives but actually meaningful bass lines sometimes when you're playing these gigs uh you have to go into a little bit of uh you know i don't know what's the, the correct term for it, but you might have to use some pads into your sounds and it's just the way it is so in other words a piano with string you've heard that used a lot of times you know, so you could be playing a ballad. So with the sustained pedal, you could be free. set up another patch you know when you go to it then it's got the same thing happening but no pad like right here I'm gonna go back to my pad sound this sound now with maybe a fretless this is a Rhodes piano with a pad very similar still very cool sound Sometimes I used to like to use sounds like that had like some voice air to it, 
This has them too if I like it. Back to strings. Upright bass. Sustain pedal allows me to hold those strings in there as long as I can. I can change my patch. I can move into any sound that I want. So I love playing split keys because it allows me the ability to do similar things that I do with the organ and be creative with left hand bass lines and comping using just two hands and a sustain pedal. So this series, Split Keys, Volume 1 basically covers sound construction, Volume 2 left hand bass uh, concepts and how to put those together using different sounds, using the fretless versus upright versus slap, how to use those styles. Volume three, the comping. We'll learn how to do one-handed comping. Volume four, putting it all together. So thanks so much. I hope this is helpful for you. I hope you go out and start splitting your keyboard up and see what you can do with it. And if you don't have a keyboard that'll split, that's okay. You know, you could just go ahead and get a plain sound, like for instance, this piano, this electric piano sound. I know it's a little weak on the bass, but you could still play around with it. You know, it's not great, but you could still get that separation. If you had a real Rhodes piano, hey man, it does actually sound pretty cool. You don't need to split anything. But if you go into this setup, you can just find that sound easily. It's, it's nice to use dedicated bass sounds because they're designed or sampled to sound like real bass. And so you might as well learn how to play bass while you're making it sound like real bass. Makes you really be begin uh, the journey of being authentic in not only the style, but the sound. So the sound makes you play differently. Find the sounds and we'll, we'll discuss those that help you learn how to play each sound authentically. Meanwhile, the comping side, it's important to learn voicings, what to omit, and voice leading so that you can actually begin to sound like really full with just the five fingers. And usually most of my voicings only contain four. So thanks a lot. Keep in touch with the website, b3monaco.com. By the way, I have all kinds of educational stuff there already, instructional videos, etc. So just go to b3monaco.com and you uh, find all kinds of instructional stuff that I have, my tour schedule, YouTube clips, all kinds of information, and of course, this new series. Keep your eyes out in the next few weeks. Split keys. We'll see you. Thank you.